Hola clase, this is Señora Mapstone, and today we are reading Gaspacho for Nacho by Tracy Kyle, illustrated by Carolina Farías. In a big, big city, by a large, busy plaza, lived a very small boy in a simple white casa. The name of this tiny muchacho was Nacho, and all he would eat was a soup called gazpacho. Gazpacho for breakfast, gazpacho for lunch, gazpacho for dinner, for snacks, and for brunch. He didn't like meat or the smell of pescado. He didn't like chicken or ice cold helado. And when he saw slices of manchego cheese, he asked, Is there any gazpacho left, please? Nacho would say, but I just want gazpacho. At breakfast, he woke up to leche and churros. He cried, Mommy, I, this is food for the burros. For snacks, Mommy sliced up chorizo and bread. Nacho would ask for gazpacho instead. At lunchtime, Mommy served a Spanish tortilla. Nacho would put the pan under his silla. At dinner, Mommy fried mushroom osetas and served them with rice next to crispy croquetas. She filled up a bowl with fresh loaves of pan and wiped up a custard dessert she called flan. All of the food was rejected by Nacho. Gazpacho, 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 he cried. And mas gazpacho. There wasn't a plato that Nacho would touch. Mommy grew tired from cooking so much. Nacho, she cried. It's not right. No es justo that all of these meals are not to your gusto. You're coming with me to the market. We are shopping. I'm learning to cook? Nacho asked, his eyes popping. The market was bustling. People were looking for all the legumbres they needed for cooking. Nacho's mouth watered with casing and piles of colorful vegetables stretched out for miles. Onions, potatoes, cebollas y papas, bamboo and spinach, bamboo espinacas, cucumber, mushrooms, pepinos y setas, lettuce and lentils, lechuga y lentejas, corn, avocados, maíz, aguacates, and last but not least, bright red, juicy tomates. Tomatoes, said Mommy. For you to cook nacho, you learn to prepare your beloved gazpacho. <gasps> Ole! Nacho cried. I can cook! Yes, I can! And off to the puestos of veggies he ran. He gathered tomatoes that smelled fresh and clean and found a pepino whose skin was dark green. Among all the colorful, fresh alimentos, he picked out a few crispy green pimientos. He added a small clove of garlic or ajo and set off for home to begin El Trabajo. Dressing the part with a huge chef's sombrero, 
Nacho fell just like a true cocinero, with bright red tomatoes piled up to his chin. He looked up at mommy and said, let's begin. They cored and they sliced and they diced and they seeded the pounds of tomatoes and peppers they needed. Mommy then carefully chopped a cebolla. Nacho helped, finding a pot, a large olla. Nacho, said Mommy, I need the pepino. He gave her the cucumber. What a good niño. Mommy, they crumbled some bread in the pot and left it to soak it till it softened a lot. They sprinkled some salt and it flew through the air. Ay, Nacho, cried Mommy, the ball's over there. Lastly, she drizzled a very small drop of oil and vinegar over the top. She blended the soup in a big batidora and left it to chill in a fridge for one hora. Dinner that night was a wonderful treat. Nacho called Mommy, La cena, come eat! Nacho rushed into the kitchen and saw the bowls of gazpacho and stood there in awe. Bowl after bowl after bowl of gazpacho, cooked by a clever, creative muchacho. He sat down to eat with a giant sonrisa and finished the soup very quickly, deprisa. Nacho was happy, but deep in his heart, he knew that gazpacho was only the start. He thought of the fresh, tasty meals he would make, the foods he would cook, and the sweets he would bake. Eagerly off to the kitchen, he dashed, where all the legumbres, the veggies, were stashed. Mommy, he said, though I love my gazpacho, I am trying new recipes. Call me Chef Nacho. And here is the end of the story of Nacho. If you all want to learn more about gazpacho, just let me know. Here is the recipe. Adios.